Hi everyone, I'm Jonah. And today, I'm replacing my inducer motor in my furnace. So, it's in the middle of November and it's starting to get cold up here in Canada. And my wife said that the furnace has not kicked on. And of course, my wife is always right. The furnace broke down. But I did notice a few weeks that my furnace was getting really loud. Therefore, I had a feeling something was going to happen. It turned out my inducer motor has seized and needed to be replaced. Got a second opinion from a family friend and a retired HVAC. And he also confirmed it was a broken inducer motor. So this is the new inducer motor I put in. And today I'm going to show you how I did it. So let's learn together. The first thing I do is I put the furnace in the off position. Then I locate my gas line beside the furnace and I follow it down and I turn it off. And here it is right here. And here is my old broken inducer motor. Now I locate my vent tube drain hose and here it is. Then I locate my pressure switch tube hose. And here it is. Carefully disconnect the drain hose from this black vent pipe. And just swing it off to the side. Then I disconnect that pressure switch hose. And again just swing it off to the side. Next, I disconnect my wire harness. I just follow my black and yellow wire. And here it is, and I'll disconnect this. Notice the locking clips on each side. Just press and pull off. After I disconnect the harness, I will have to remove the zip tie that holds all the wires together. A pair of scissors did the trick for me. Be careful when cutting it. Make sure you don't cut any of the wires. Now I disconnect my ground wire. I just follow the green and yellow wire. And here it is. I'll need a flathead screwdriver for this. Now I just have to loosen the two screws from my vent tube clamp. No need to remove it all the way. Now just wiggle it back and forth and push up. It's a little tight so be patient. And there you go. Just give it enough clearance. Now we have four mounting screws to be removed. Remember not to throw away these four screws. You'll need them later on.
Now we can remove the old inducer motor. Notice that orange reducer? You're gonna need that. Don't throw that away. This fits right here. Like so. Your new parts doesn't come with this reducer. So make sure you don't lose it. Notice our old model number right here. Because this furnace is over 20 years old, there's now a new part number for it. So let's take a look at my old inducer. Notice, look at all the rust around my motor. Looks like water has gotten into it. And if you watch my old video on my AC, you know how this happened. Comment below if you know what happened. Now I take a look at the fan wheel. Notice it has seized and barely moves. Now let's take a look at the new motor I just bought. About 250 Canadian. Now notice the fan wheel of this new motor. Big difference, eh? It spins freely. So now I have to remove this adhesive type gasket. And the new parts offer me a black one and a white one similar to the old one. So I tried to replace it with the exact one with a white one. And I quickly found out that the adhesive type protection in the back was super difficult to take out. So the wax paper that protects the adhesive did not want to come off. I even let my wife try it and she couldn't do it either, even with her small fingers. So I switched with a black one, which was much better. And the backing was easy to take off. So I couldn't find my scraper, so I used this. If you know what I'm using as my makeshift scraper, comment below. Sometimes you have to be creative, right? <laughs> then I sanded the area to give it an even surface. Then installed the gasket. Then I installed the old reducer. But notice the position of the reducer. I also put two small masking tapes to hold it down. But this is optional. Because if you don't, the reducer keeps falling off when I try to position it to install it. So I line everything up and install the motor with the new screws that they gave me which was a mistake. So here's one mistake I did. I used the brand new screws that they gave me. They were actually too big, too long and too thick. Therefore, I could not tighten it all the way. And I didn't want to push my luck in case I break the mounting. And you know, I get enough exercise by pushing my luck. <laughs> So that's right, you guessed it, I had to remove it and start again. So I went back to the old screws, because I know they were a perfect fit. And they're also in great condition. But I ran into another problem. Notice the screw has a built-in washer. 
Those washers now hit the side and does not give me a perfect fit. So now I have to snip that washer just enough to give me that clearance. Sometimes you have to be creative, right? <laughs> and there you go. Now it's going to be a perfect fit. Filipino creativity. <laughs> now you can see what I'm talking about. That washer now has that perfect clearance it needs. Now we can line up our vent pipe. It can be a little bit tricky, but be patient. Just wiggle it in slowly. You have enough play to give it a push up and move it a little bit sideways and wiggle it in until you get the perfect fit. And there you go. Just make sure everything's all lined up. And now we can fully tighten all four screws. And tighten the two screws on the vent tube clamp. Then I reconnect the green ground wire. Now I connect my drain hose to my vent pipe. Now I connect the pressure switch hose to the inducer. Then I reconnect our wire harness. Then I tie strap all the wires together so they don't look like spaghetti. Then I turn on my gas. Then I'm going to duct tape my on off switch because I'm going to test and see to see everything is okay. Then I go to my thermostat to call for some heat. The heat is on and the fan is on automatic. Then I set the temperature to 74. Then I put the furnace switch back to on position. And music to my ears. And there you go. Notice the inducer motor kick in. Then notice my flame sensor start to glow. Then the burners kick in. And there we go, another successful DIY. Now that I know everything's good, I shut off my thermostat, I can take off my duct tape, and close everything up. After I close everything up, 
I put my thermostat back on and we are done. So if you liked this video and found it helpful, give me a thumbs up, comment and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you always get my latest videos. Thanks for watching.